Hey guys, in uh, Revelation chapter three, it says in verse seven concerning the message to the church at Philadelphia, not Pennsylvania, that hadn't happened yet. This was a church in what is now modern day Turkey. It's a local church group and the Lord is speaking to the leadership of the church and he says, he who is holy, who is true, who has the key of David, who opens and no one will shut and who shuts and no one opens says this, I know your deeds and behold, I have put before you an open door which no one can shut because you have a little power and have followed my word and have not denied my name. Now I want to focus on this. What this is, this is a transitional moment for a people. They've come through some successes. They've come through some things and now they're in a transition zone. And they anticipate something. They have an inkling that something new is going to happen, but it hasn't opened up yet. But the Lord is assuring them, hey, you, you've, you have a little power. You, you know, you've been empowered by me, and now you've got the power to stand. And I'm going to open up a door for you, and I'm going to pour out more power. He gives power to the faint, to those who lack mighty increases power. And to those that lack wisdom, we can ask, and he'll give it to us. Uh, he is, he's, he gives guidance. He gives power to the faint. They that wait upon the Lord will gain new strength. So in a moment like this, with these little vignettes of, de of devotion, what we're doing, the goal is, is just to focus. You know, on, on YouTube, there all, there's all kinds of like spear fishing information, and there's, uh, you know, how to repair wristwatches information, and there's, you know, fail army of uh, what not to do at work, you know, and all these these porch uh, camera videos of people slipping down the stairs or kids falling off skateboards. But this is a focus on the Word of God and sowing toward our spirit, you know. Learning how to fry fish is important. You don't want to overdo it. You don't want to underdo it. But, boy, this is preeminent that we learn to strengthen ourselves in the Lord. There's so much vying for our attention and there's so much to dissipate our energies and blur our vision and drain our, our, our strength. But just knowing what the admonishment was from God to Joshua and Caleb in Joshua chapter 1, only be strong and very courageous. Once, twice, three, four times that's stated in one short chapter. It said, no man will be able to stand before you all the days of your life. This says, a uh, door no man can shut. God, when he's determined to do something with his people, we could trust it. It's going to happen. Heaven and earth will pass away, but his word will not pass away. And we fix our hope on the living God. And because we do, it's anchoring. And, and when we do it, it's like uh, if all hell's breaking loose at work, God, I pray for favor, for peace. I, God, I pray you turn this around for good. Uh, you know, the devil tries to disrupt cities uh, and, and ruin cities. He's, he's a thief who comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He's a hater. He hates people. He even hates the people that follow him. He hates the people that worship him. It's, it's all a lie. He, there's nothing good about following after the devil and, and you know, the, the, just the selfishness of all that. Um, we need to humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God and uh, reverence him and fear him and honor him as uh, more important than anything else. And, you know, he gives this cue to this church and for that matter to all of us, hey, I know your deeds. I, I'm watching your heart. I'm there for you. I, I, you. Ask me, I'll deliver you from the tempter. I'll ask me and I'll cleanse you and forgive you and keep you on your feet and you can recover and keep going. You know, the, the righteous fall seven times and the Lord picks them right back up. So if you're disappointed with yourself and you feel like, man, and the devil's saying, what kind of Christian are you, you know? He tempts you and then you fall and then look what kind of Christian you are. You say you're a Christian. Well, 
Yeah, well, God's mercy is what I stand for and I believe for. And I'm anointed to tell you this right now, that since that same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in you, it says in Romans chapter 8, he gives life to your mortal body. You know, you who have just come through a surgery, you that have experienced a loss of a loved one and you're needing the God of all comfort to get on your broken heart and mend it. He, that's what he's about. That's what he does. He only does wondrous things. So I trust that this has helped you and I pray it revitalizes your faith, strengthens you with might and power by his spirit in your inner man. I pray if you're going to bed, you get a good, good, deep, nice sleep, sweet dreams. And if you're facing off the day and I pray you bear good fruit and get a lot accomplished, check off the to-do list and feel that you were fruitful. And it was one of those good days in Jesus name. Amen.